This episode of Performance Anxiety features photographer Priscilla C. Scott. She's a live music staple in L.A. She's photographed amazing bands like Failure, Garbage, Interpol, and so many more. We talk about how she got into live music photography, shooting in studio, what gear she prefers, and how shooting live music has changed over the years. And I get to geek out on photography for an episode. Enjoy Priscilla C. Scott on Performance Anxiety. And don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes. Five stars would be nice. My name is Priscilla C. Scott. I'm a photographer, and you're listening to Performance Anxiety. Whatever it just sounds so like a robot. <laughs> okay, I'll do one more. I'm Priscilla C. Scott. I shoot photos, and you're listening to Performance Anxiety. I want to thank you, actually, first of all, for sending me the list of musicians that, you, that you've that worked with and that you like, because... I have a lot. <laughs> oh, but that's exactly what I do. Like somebody says, "Oh, I like this band," and I, or "I like that band." Who would you listen to? Oh my gosh! All right, and then the floodgates open up, and you oh, you got to listen to this. You got to listen to that band. You got to listen to these guys. These guys. Well, I thought I'd give you some some variety to variety to look through too, because I, I figured you'd be look, searching through music and yes, just it's something for you to choose from. Well, I've been going down a, a rabbit hole, noveler and. Uh, A novella, okay. Yeah, that's actually it's it's uh, I, I believe it's um, novella stems from like novella, like a okay, the like the, the soap operas, the Spanish soap operas. Uh, okay, okay, and uh, and Fever Ray. I mean, I've just gone down a hole with those two. So it's yeah. Thank did you. you find, did you discover the knife through Fever Ray? Uh. I, the knife is a separate no. band that was um I think the knife is pre Fever Ray. Fever the knife was a uh, it's the woman of Fever Ray and her brother. Okay. And then I think they stopped doing the knife cuz I'm not sure what happened and then he yeah. Yes. Fever Ray. <laughs> so yeah. Well I've just I've just been listening to him constantly. So um and you've shot I know you shot uh I'm going to say this right Novella Beller, yeah. So, you've done some amazing work. I, I've really enjoyed looking at your website and, and the and the stuff you've done. You get a, I don't even, I don't even know if I can say a band like, no, I'm kind of say it wrong every single time. Uh, <laughs> Novella. <laughs> Novella. I got to. Because you've been saying thing. it that one way the whole time. Yeah. So now it's gonna stick in your head. Exactly. Yeah, that way. And, and I'm gonna be searching for my notes while. I'm, oh, I just found them. Um, but it's a one one woman project. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the textures in her music are so dense. Do you, when, and you've shot her live several times and, and in the studio, but is it hard to get across musically what, what she's doing in your photos when it's just a one person project? I mean, I think so just because, I mean, cause people will see the photo and think it looks cool. And they'll ask me what she like. And I only, I'm always like, you should go and see her. Cause it definitely is. She's, it's definitely an experience and it's a little bit different than a traditional live show with a band. Uh, yeah. So I guess it, I would say, yeah, I, I don't think I could capture that all in, in one photo or I don't know, maybe someone else thinks that who's a fan of hers, but <laughs> I, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. Cause you've done some great stuff with Failure um, and, and with a lot of the other bands, uh, Garbage. You know, you, you, you really capture a mood, but with one person, it, it, it's really, it's really, I mean, you get a, you, you kind of get the depth in your photos, but it's just, her sound is just so, I don't know, it's hard to, desc- it's hard to describe in mm. words, let alone photos. So, um, yeah. I've, I'm really, I, I've really enjoyed looking through your work and I've noticed that you. Uh, you have a you have a section on your website for iPhone photos as opposed to your standard equipment photos and and I I'm going to I've got a photo background so I'm not I'm going to try not to go too you know geeky on people here so <laughs> like, yeah, I actually want people to listen who aren't sure. photographers or former <laughs> photographers but right, but right, uh, right. since I mentioned that let, let's go into that before we go into too many more bands what is what is your background in photography did you study it did you go to school for it or is it just something that you picked up and naturally were drawn to um i would say 
definitely self-taught. I did go to school for a short time, um, but okay. cameras were kind of in just around growing up. My Both of my parents, my mom always had a camera. She had one of those, it's hard for me to remember what they're called. They're the old Kodaks that were kind of rectangular. The brownies? That had the, that had the flash cube on top. Yeah, like the old, oh, and I know. Wine. Yeah, they're, they're kind of thin. Yeah, that they were like rectangular. Yeah, they had the flash so my cubes. Mom, Exactly. She had one of those cameras and I just grew up with her taking, she just took photos like of us, uh, myself and my brothers, my family, you know, just family photos. Right. But I just picked it up and got interested in it. And I remember my dad also had a video camera. Um, I mean, when I think when they started to become popular, like I have a, I was born in 82 and I'd have like video of my first birthday. And I know that's kind of like, kind of a, the beginning of like whenever when most people were having video cameras when it started to become popular and like not just like you know people who were passionate about it had a camera like everyone could like have a camera yeah yeah they they were still kind of large but the price was coming down yes. oh i remember his camera was huge it was like <laughs> over the shoulder yeah like yeah with a big vhs cassette in there yeah. um but uh my brother and i, I have a brother who's close i have three younger brothers but um one of the oldest of the brothers, he's closest in age to my, myself, we're two years apart. Um, him and I used to like make little stop animation videos on there, and oh, we used man. to like make little um, radio shows with cassettes. So I, I started kind of yeah. just playing with that kind of stuff as a kid. Um, and then, but it was funny, my mom would, um, she would like get her film developed. And like bring it back and see that the images were taken from a perspective of someone really short. Yeah. <laughs> and she would ask me if I took them and I would, you know, lie because I thought I was going to get in trouble and be like, no, I didn't. I didn't. I <laughs> and she's like, really? <laughs> you just, uh, so, you yeah. were just kneeling. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of started there. And then um, once I was able to get my own camera, actually, I started uh, using um disposable cameras a lot because those are starting to become pretty popular. Also, I started taking pictures of just friends and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, again, like I said, self-taught. And then at some point, uh, oh. you cut out. Is that again. the wrong answer? <laughs> no, no, you, you cut out again. I didn't hear what you said. I heard, I'll, I'll, I asked you, I said, oh, so you were taking uh, pictures with disposable cameras a lot. And then I heard what sounded like a foghorn. Oh, you know, it was my air conditioning. I know I'm sitting right next to it. I need to hold on. Let me let me move to a different room. I'm not sure if maybe that's part of it. I okay. just didn't want to be around my dogs. Oh, because what, they may bark. What kind of and, dogs? Um, I have a Labradoodle and a um, Schnauzer Terrier mix. Oh, wow! And a cat. So where were we? Okay, so you said that you got started using disposable cameras a lot when you were first getting into photography right so uh yeah after i was using my mom's camera um then it kind of moved up to uh disposable cameras because they started to become pretty popular mm -hmm. around that time and they were really inexpensive um and then i would shoot mostly just friends um just my friends and uh i took yearbook in high school okay uh which i definitely learned a lot there um <laughs> all right we had a teacher who was kind of a uh, he was the kind of teacher who, I don't know, he was such a grumpy guy. He was always so grumpy. <laughs> and that's where I learned what a candid photo was. Okay. He was, he was so angry one day when we all came back, you know, with our images. And he was just like, so, he, he never told us what a candid image was, but just kind of expected us to sort of like know what to do. Um, and then would like, you know, get upset with us later. Um <laughs> I mean, I learned though. Sounds like me trying to teach a class. That's, 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 unfortunately, that's why. What do you mean you don't know this? Everybody knows this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I took your book in high school, um, and I I got my first SLR uh, in my very early twenties. Actually, no. I before I got the SLR, I, I got a digital camera, just like a point and shoot. Really? So you went digital um, first, and then. Traditional film. Yeah, um, I got it. I got it as a gift, and it was basically to replace all the digital, the disposable cameras that I was always using. Okay. Um, which, when digital came out, that was such a bizarre. Like I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that you could erase an image and then just 
take it over again. Yeah. Oh, I know. When I was, in, I went to school for photography. Uh, I went to RIT for a few years and, uh, mm-hmm. I went early nineties. And so Photoshop was just coming out and right. it was really basic. And I remember a friend of mine got <clears throat> one of the first, uh, first editions of it. And he was like, Hey, look at, look at the stuff you can do. And it looked like such garbage. I mean, everything looked like South Park, you know, or <laughs> Max Headroom right. or something. It was, it was, it was right. terrible. I'm like, why, why are you fooling around with this? Because this was like 91, 92. So I'm like, why are you fooling around with this? You, you know, you're in this, this school. You've got these amazing people at your disposal. And you, you're just sitting around screwing around with this stuff. But he was right. And here, yeah, here we are now. It's it's insane. It's absolutely. And I remember insane. that first digital camera I got too looked funny. It was just like a little box, almost. It seemed like this chunky little box. Yes, I. In fact, I still have a couple of those, and I I opened it up, opened one of them up, and I looked at the uh, SD card in it. Oh. And, yeah. and it was like two hundred and fifty six k or something. It was like it was like it was, there's like some some absolutely minuscule amount. You couldn't even fit one picture on it now. Right. It was insane. But I still have. Those. Stupid SD cards. I don't know why I don't throw them away. I still have them. <laughs> <laughs> so what what kind of uh, what kind of equipment do you use now? So now I've been using. Um, I shoot with a Sony A7S. Okay. I used to shoot with Canon for a while, for a long time. Oh. Um, I actually turned to Sony. Um, Ken actually, Ken Andrews uh, was the person who turned me on to Sony. Oh, okay. Um, he's. Uh, I don't know if you know that about him. He's. Uh, really talented and well, he's a gearhead. Oh yeah. <laughs> but like with cameras too, uh, not just, um, not just music gear. Oh, um, he's a, he's a film. He used to go to film school. Oh, okay. So well, that makes sense. Definitely is knowledgeable. Um, and he's been really helpful just in terms of like, just helping me out with gear. Um, but we're talking about, I was complaining about something regarding my Canon and, he just mentioned, Oh, you know, you should look into this kind of camera. And then he actually got them himself and he shoots a lot of the, um, like the, actually, I don't know. He, he uses it quite often, like quite a bit. Um, so okay. yeah, I, so I switched over to Sony, um, but I use Canon lenses on it because, um, I still had the lenses and I didn't want to get rid of them cause they were good lenses. So I just, uh, I have that attachment, the, uh, Metabones attachment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That you put on there. So that's, yeah. Well, that's really. I'm a, I've always been a Canon guy. I grew up with the uh, AE1 and the A1 and the F1. Went through all that progression, and I've kind of gone back to the Canon. For, uh, well, or I should say, stayed with Canon for my digital setup. But it's uh, I've got the 5D Mark II, and I've had that forever, and I I, I love it. I've always I've always been a, a Canon guy. It's amazing to me even the advances that they've made from that camera. I mean the the, mm-hmm. uh, the amount of memory that the new that the new Mark III has, it's just it's insane. I mean, how big of how many megapixels do you do you need? I mean, I can already shoot at you know ten o'clock at night handheld. I mean, well, one of the things that sold me on the Sony was the fact that it's um it's so small. The body is really small, and I'm definitely the type of person who is really I try to be as minimal as possible with my gear. Um, it makes sense when you shoot, even when like, shooting live. Yeah. Um, yeah. I try to do minimal, everything minimum, minimal gear, minimal editing, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, um, simple. And the Sony is, it's, the body is very, it, I mean, in comparison to the Canon, it's very small. Um, okay. Which I, which I find is also good. It's a positive when you're, um, say like you're shooting the like candidates outside. Um, it's, I feel like it's less, I don't think people see it as like this big SLR camera. It's not right. as um, intrusive. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And, and like we were saying, you know, you shoot a lot of, of live artists, you know, music, musicians live on stage and, and having a small rig is a huge asset in that, in that, that type of situation. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's funny, I guess, I mean, it depends. I mean, you can you could bring all kinds of stuff to help you out. I mean, I see people who have like three cameras on them because they don't want to switch lenses, you know, in, right. in the, which I get. I totally get. And I don't know, maybe they have they might have better images, <laughs> but I just can't stand the fact of having like three cameras on me. It just for me, I'm, I'm just not into it. I, you know, uh, 
no. <laughs> it, would, it would make me paranoid to be honest. That I'm going to start Thank smacking God for them. We do have that because yeah. I'm going to do. <laughs> well, it, 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 I would be paranoid about smacking my lenses into yeah. something and, and and ruining a you know a thousand dollar lens. That too. So that now, too. That same thing. How did you get started working with uh, in the live music arena? Oh, um, well, when I first moved to LA, which I've been here now for. I think I moved here back in 2004, 2004, 2005. I can't even remember around that time. Um, it, it really became a way for me to, um, this was like back when MySpace was pretty popular. So what I would do would be like, I would hit up bands. I would see who was playing, see what was going on at whatever venue and then um reach out to whoever was playing that night and ask if i could take photos it would be a way for me to get into the show okay uh and then also get to take photos and then uh also get, and to meet people it, was, it just seems like an all-around good thing yeah. <laughs> to like get out there and to like you know make friends and meet people um and just meet just everybody who are playing in these all these different bands um, so it started that way where I would actually directly contact bands via MySpace. And okay. then that would turn into like, you know, maybe I took a picture of this band and, you know, they would know someone that I'd make friends, you know, with, with people doing it that way. Okay. Um, and I still, I feel like I still, um, connect with, or I still reach out to bands directly. Well, you've shot some really interesting bands and I'm, I've got my list here. Let me read off a couple of these. So. We can get an idea here. Blonde Redhead, we're awesome. Interpol, Failure, Garbage, uh, Chelsea Wolf, Teen, which I know you're really high on Teen right now. Mastodon, Veruca Salt, Autolux, who I'm, I'm a big fan of Autolux. Local H, Hum, one of my favorite bands of all time. I love Hum. Um, let's see, page two. Uh, we've got <laughs> Trail of Dead, another great band of Montreal. Uh Deep Valley and Best Coast, just to name another here. thing. I, another thing I forgot to mention while you're reading off those bands, um, the bands that I was seeking out also were bands that I wanted to shoot. A lot of them were bands that I was actually fans of. Um, not every, especially in the beginning, not every band that I shot was a band that like that I that I knew and that I was a fan of. But right. a lot of those bands, like Interpol or Teen, Autolux, Failure, they're all bands that I'm a fan of, and I actually find. Uh, that it's easier for me to shoot them actually because I know because I know the music so well so I know what's coming up you know like um, you know I know all the dramatic moments that are going to happen say you know failure playing heliotropic live uh-huh. you know like a, a So um, that was that was also a part of it. I was shooting bands that I actually was a fan of. Um, I didn't really. I, I very there was very very few bands that I shot. Uh, I don't know. Most I would say like ninety nine percent of the bands that I shot are bands bands that I wanted to shoot that I pursued because I was a fan of of their music. Okay. And just wanted to. It was, it was like an all around good experience getting right, to right. shoot, getting to see, getting to hear my favorite bands, getting to give them, uh, work, getting to practice shooting. That, the, uh, the, the explosion of social media seems to have made it a little bit easier for people to, to get that kind of uh, access to bands say, Hey, can I, is it okay if I bring a camera or can I get a media pass? Or, you know, if, if you go that mm-hmm. far, uh, you know, I'll, you guys feel free to look at the images and use whatever you want. Um, uh, and that. When I was in school and trying to do it, it, there wasn't that avenue, and it was a lot harder. And it was one that was one area I always yeah. wanted to try to do, and never could make the connections to get to it. So I'm loving you watching have to it. Be out there too, you know. Like that's another thing. I'm sure pre, you know, pre social media back, like say in the '60s. I always think about how I'm always envious of a lot of rock photographers of that era because they were they had so much more freedom to just walk up and go backstage. Yeah. You know, now it's it's so much that that part of it um, it's different. Oh <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But you can, um, but like you said, it is easier to you know 
like teen, for instance, there was someone that they were a band that I was into. They don't, they're not, they're a Brooklyn based band. I'm here in LA and one email, you know, I happen to find an address and yeah. just ask. And that's another thing. I think a lot of people just don't ask. Yeah. You know, you that's... think you're going to get shut down and you may get shut down. I mean, I've certainly asked and people have just not responded to me, but then there's so many people who do or, you know, yeah. So yeah. just asking is a big deal. And... Do you shoot a, a, most of the, the, uh, live footage, the, the concert footage with, uh, your camera? Do you take your iPhone? Is it split? Um, all of the live photos, I mean, they're usually all taken with a, an SLR. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll stop in between and like take a couple of pictures or video of the show and I'll post it like on Instagram just as like a, I was depending on who the band is, is you know, if I, if I posted it, it's probably cause I was really excited and it was a good show. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would say for the most part, it's all on my camera. And I usually just bring one lens. It's like my Sony with my 24 to 70 and that's it. Well, that's, if, if you're you know, close enough, I mean, that's a, that's a good lens to, to use. You get, yeah, you can get good wide of the whole band or you can focus in on, on one musician. So that's a, that's an excellent choice. Who are your photographic influences? Um, you mean like who, like other photographers who I like, or what influences me in my photography? Well, first let's let's go with uh, other photographers that maybe you you studied or, or that you in, uh, maybe maybe emulate a little bit. I definitely am a huge fan of Cindy Sherman. Oh God! Are yeah. you, do you know who, do you know who Cindy Sherman? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, a really a really good friend of mine, uh, Kara. Shout out to Kara in Jersey. <laughs> She turned me on to Cindy Sherman. Uh, I used to work with Kara at Tower Records um, when I first moved here to L.A. Okay. She turned me on to a lot of cool shit, actually. Um, Cindy Sherman and Richard Prince, who was someone also who I'm into, uh, who I was a big Sonic Youth fan, and those all tie in together, which I, I, w- I wasn't even aware of like the connection to Sonic Youth to those artists Okay, yeah. until I met Kara later. But um, that, her and I we had bonded over the fact that we both were really into Sonic Youth and then she kind of opened me up to this other world. But Cindy Sherman, for sure, she's somebody who, uh, yeah, I have like just crazy respect for her and she's, she's still creating and doing, I don't know if you, have you followed any of her stuff recently? Not recently. She's still doing self portraits, but she's doing these like really interesting, um, they're like, it's like digital art. She's completely, Oh, okay. Um, which I just think is so cool because she's she's been consistently making really interesting work, um, and she's just still doing For a it. Long time too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm a big fan of her. Um, I'm also, you know, film is is huge is a, is a huge uh, contributor to uh, my photos and my uh, just when I come up with concepts and things like that. Okay. Um, and she made a movie. She made one movie uh, called Office Killer. Okay. And it's oh, and I love it. It's uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a campy horror movie, but okay. it's 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 so it's so funny. Um, and oh, who does it star? I can't remember her name right now, but it's that's a great movie. Um, um, and and just uh, her as a photographer making that movie, it's got it's got a great style. And you know her her style, she's got that whole you know film stills collection. Right. Um. So that movie is, you know, uh, even though it's like this camp horror movie, it's really, uh, it's actually very visual. Okay. I love it. Well, I, I like, and I keep saying this because, but it's, it's true. I'm really, I really like your work and I see some of, uh, people like Henri Cartier-Bresson's his decisive moment in your work where there's wow. one moment and, and, and for non, you know, people who don't know, Henri Cartier-Bresson, he, his decisive moment was in, in any given picture, there is one moment where it, everything is perfect. And I see a lot of that. Like, uh, you've got one picture of Kelly Scott from Failure, who's also your husband, uh, yes. leaving the stage, uh, I believe it's at the Rock Sea. I was just looking at it a few minutes ago, and uh, it's fantastic. The, the, the exposure is perfect, the, the contrast. Kelly's expression. I think I know what talking about. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a wider shot of him. You've got a little bit of the backstage. I think that's equipment. actually taken with it might, that might have been taken with my phone. That I think if I remember, and that's I believe in San Diego. That I, I think that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, that's it was it was fantastic, and it's one of those where 
It was just taken just at the right time. You can see that that it, you know, he's tired, but it's been a great show. You can see the crowd is still pumped, and they're still you can see right. people in the audience screaming and yelling, and it's just a it, it's really a great shot. And to me, that's what uh, Brisson's decisive moment was all about. So. Thank you. That's that's a major compliment. Oh gosh, my pleasure. I, I just I love talking photo with people, and I can do it all day. What is uh What are some of the strangest things you've shot? Strangest things? Yeah, and it could be mu- music. It could be um, mm-hmm. and another project that you've done. I see. I see you, you did a uh, uh, a project with uh, projection. Oh yeah, it could be that's either, fun. Anything that like would, that. What was one of the weirdest things you shot? Well, I recently shot a show that was a, um, it was, it was like a, what they described as a, an immersive rock show. Okay. It was, uh, it was, uh, it's a group called Stunt Driver and it, um, it was, it's, it was kind of like musical theater almost. All right. Um, and the audience was like, was part of it. Oh, really? How, and, how did that? How'd that work? Well, and the whole, it was really cool, actually. I, I had no idea what to expect. I wasn't really um, told much before I got the gig. I just kind of went and <laughs> I did my own, I did my own research a little bit. And I thought, this looks, this looks interesting. Like, I'll, this seems fun. Um, they did this whole show about, it, it was this, it was regarding social media and kind of how it's, it's taken over and people are kind of self-obsessed. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it was this whole show where the audience was part of it. And, uh, myself, I was in it too. I just, you wow. know, I remember asking, where do I shoot from? And they said, well, you're just you, wherever you just get in there. Wow. Oh, <laughs> so, man. I was like, okay. so, um, that Jeez. was, that was just really fun. That was a fun experience. And everybody there too was, they were all really great people. And, um, it was kind of one of those, I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day. I, I had one of those moments where it just felt like it was nice to be surrounded by all of these people who I'm sure all have, they all have their own lives and their jobs, but they're all there doing this, this really like, you know, crazy fun show. Yeah. All in the name of being creative. And it kind of made me feel like, you know, I was back in, you know, theater again, kind of like drama. Oh, it, it was fun. Do you have a, a drama background, theater background? I, when I was, uh, uh, yeah, when I was all through like middle school. Okay. Yeah. Actually, that's why I came, I came to LA to pursue acting actually. Oh really? And I, that was part of me turning into a photographer was, um, during the first, during taking my headshots, like the first, well, the only time I took headshots, (laughs) um, the photographer, he kind of, he like let me sort of navigate everything. He sort of left it up to me. He asked like, where do you want to shoot? Should we shoot here? And then Hmm. by the end of it, I remember seeing the photos and they were okay, but I was more interested. I I was more interested in, you know, um, the behind the camera. Right. I realized like, Oh, I actually don't like, you know, well, I do, I do take photos, but I'm more interested in in taking photos and having my photo taken. So what was your, your first professional photo job? Uh, First one where you got paid. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be in music. Oh man, I, I would. I feel like it was a show. Um, man, I'm probably surprised you a remember. show, but I mean, like, not even maybe not even a show. Maybe some maybe promo. Maybe something. Maybe for someone for promo, like a long time ago. Oh, okay. Can't even remember, but um, yeah. No, it's the only thing I can. Um, I haven't really. Yeah, I've mostly <laughs> I've mostly shot. I've mostly just shot shows music of shop like i've shot kid kid birthday parties actually no i should say kid birthday party just there was this one kid <laughs> and i shot his his birthday for the for like the first few years of his life because i used to work with his dad oh okay um when you said uh, birthday party i was thinking i did one and that was it no. i was done <laughs> <laughs> I think, no, it was a little F this. I'm, I'm not doing this shit anymore <laughs> No, I think I, um, and actually one year it was really fun cause he had one of those like, uh, reptile guys come over and they had a bunch of insects and snakes and stuff like that. So oh, that was cool. That's not what I was picturing a dude in a reptile suit or something. Oh no. <laughs> no, they actually brought reptiles. Oh, that's, I guess that's better. I don't know. Yeah. One of them's less yeah. creepy. 
man. Yeah, I would say music. I would say. I mean, I've been I've been consistently shooting music related photography now for a while. I guess it's been it's gone it's gone by. Well, have uh, have any uh, album covers from when you were a kid? Did they, did any of them influence? What you do now? You ever emulate any of them? I guess I'm using emulate a lot tonight, but <laughs> emulate the word of the day. It's, I must have been on a calendar or something. <laughs> you know, I mean, just in general, I feel like when I, whenever I, music has always been such a huge part of my life. That's another. My parents also, both of my parents listen to music. Both listen to different types of music, so that was great because I got you know both both of their tastes. Okay. Um, but I always remember, um, and my mom and we, and I grew up having vinyl also. So I remember, yeah. um, I remember Madonna records. I was really Madonna, into Madonna when I was like four. I still, I still like Madonna, but when I was <laughs> like four, I was super into Madonna. Um, I remember, I mean, and I, and I still collect vinyl now and I love mm-hmm. being able to like have, having something, you know, physical and yes. With vinyl, it's always more. You know, you get you get the photos and exactly you get the liner notes. You, that's and that's. I don't know if you, if you're similar to me, but when I get a CD, I or vinyl, I'll go through it. I'll look at the thank yous and the for, absolutely. For the and that's how I found some of my favorite bands. I was absolutely that nerd. I was that person. <laughs> that's what I mean by you know when I went when I go to shoot these bands, it's like bands that I know. Who I'm very familiar with their music, and. I just want to see the show and shoot the show. And sometimes it's hard to do, yeah. <laughs> to do both at the same time, but, yeah, I um, can imagine. but it's, it's such a, it's a cool experience. I don't know. I, I, I don't mind it. It's okay. So <laughs> do you ever look at any, uh, any album covers or and photos inside the, the inlays and all and just look at it and think I could have done that better. In terms of like the, the, the artwork. Yeah. Like, like Oh, the, the photography. No. And you look at it and say, you know what? If that was me, I would have done something a little bit different. No. No, I don't think so. I mean, I've, there's nice. definitely, maybe, maybe somebody has chosen something and I'm like, oh, that's not really that. That might be a, I can't even think of what was a boring cover right now. I'm looking at, I, I'm looking at vinyl right now in front of me. just. In, in <laughs> and right now it's all pretty okay. I mean, I guess, I don't know, even like the old jazz standard records are, you know, they're such a, they're very normal covers, but like, they're, I don't know. No, I think they're all fine. Well, the photography of them is, is usually amazing. And that's, that's the one oh, thing yeah. that's about those old jazz records, you know, that they're, they're, they can be really contrasty or. Yeah, or, if anything, those are definitely what influenced me for sure. Especially some of those old, like, um, all the studio shots with like the Beatles. The oh, Beatles yeah. are like my first, like my, my, my first love oh, gosh, are the yeah. Beatles. Um, and you know, they have their, they have a ton of those images of just that time, the black and white studio. That's, and, and I, I love the, the, uh, the studio. And I guess maybe that's part of the music nerd in me is that I, I love seeing the behind the scenes photos, which I mean, I've, I've been pouring through your website, looking at uh, the behind the scenes stuff with, um, uh, Tim Alexander, stuff with, with failure and, and it's kind of goes along with when I find a, an artist that I like, I'm a completist. I want to, I want all, all the albums. I want all the B sides. I want demos. I want to hear everything. I want to hear how a song right. progressed from a demo to the final product. Mm-hmm. And that goes along with the photography too. I, I love seeing the, the shots and the liner notes and all from when, when they're demoing it in the studio and recording it to them performing it live. And I don't right. know, maybe that's just a personality thing, but I, I just tend to be a completist. Yeah, um, I, I I can understand. I, <laughs> I, I understand that feeling. So I wanted to touch on this uh, at all with with you or Kelly, when because I've had had Kelly on the show uh, before. How did you meet up with Kelly? Um, Kelly was playing in a band that I was shooting. Um, he was actually my my point of contact. It was again, I was looking to see who was playing at Molly Malone's. Uh, it's, it's a club on Fairfax in LA. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I was at work, uh, you know, I had a, my day job and I was online and I saw that there was this band. It was, um, Justin Cotta and the Tender Hooks. Okay. Uh, he's, I believe Justin Cotta is Australian, but he had a, that was like an LA based band. 
Um, right. And I, I messaged Kelly and I asked, uh, you know, I just basically introduced myself, said who I was and, you know, asked if I could shoot. And he said, sure. Yeah, no problem. So he said, you know, put you on the guest list. And I met him briefly before the show just to just to say hello and get my photo pass or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and they played the show and the show was the band was um, they weren't they're not they weren't a rock band. They were more. I don't even describe them kind of a little bit more, a little darker piano. There was okay. like piano and like a stand up bass. Oh, wow. And Kelly at the time doesn't look like he did not look like how he looks today he had he was like he had a bandana on and long hair he was oh. like john bonham from here up from like the neck up he was like john bonham and then like <laughs> from the neck down he was like nick cave he had like a vest a black shirt and a vest on and it was like kind of dressed nice oh, wow. and i remember him using the brushes on the you know the the on the drum kit uh, not the whole time but you know it was right. softer it wasn't a rock band um, I talked to him briefly after and that was it. And then I left and it was, there was no, you know, I, I was there doing a job, no big deal. And then the singer, they were playing again and the singer invited me out. Um, they used one of my photos that I took as a, a show poster. Oh, cool. Which was really cool. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. And uh, he invited me out and he said, you know, they wanted to give me a poster and they're all very sweet and, so I saw them again and <clears throat> shot them again. And then after that, um, Kelly and I just, we became friends. But we were friends for a while before we started um, actually seeing each other. So you guys got to know each other. That's oh, yeah. We were, um, yeah, like I, whenever people ask, I always tell them, like, we met in, we met in May and I don't think we even kissed each other until, like, September, October, or something like that. We weren't. It took a while. We yeah. were. We were just. We were being friends and getting to know each other. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> we're being. We're being. Just getting to know each other. Yeah. So, Ed, but the cool thing is, I see wonderful familiarity with the stuff you shoot for failure. Not and not just with Kelly, but with Greg and uh, Greg Edwards and Ken Andrews. How strange is it to see your work for sale on their on their albums? You know, you'll see in Bandcamp and uh, or uh, Pledge Music and the albums that they send you. You know their uh, band photos, the stuff that you shot, and you know thousands upon thousands of people are now have your work in their hands. Is that how does how does how does that feel? Um, I don't know. I honestly haven't really thought about it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Too focused sometimes on your work, it's right? Cool. Like sometimes I'll come. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I will say like when the when they released their live record on vinyl, which was pretty recent. Yes. Um, they used most of the most of the, I think all of the actual band photos that are on there, because um, it's it's the artwork is split between band photos and um, posters, like uh, illustrations. Right. All the the photos are my photos. Um, when I saw that. That was really cool, I, especially because it was on vinyl. Yeah, um, and this is for the, uh, the that definitely. This is for the anniversary album of Fantastic Planet. Yes, right? yeah, for the, the the twenty the twenty year anniversary of Fantastic Planet. So, and that would, um, yeah, that was huge for me. Yeah, that was see, and that's that, a big deal. Um, I offer people my photos for free to put in their albums, and nobody ever takes me up on it. So. Maybe one of these days. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, do you ever find yourself in an artistic rut with your work, saying, "Oh, here I am, just shooting somebody, get the same live shots, same framing, same lighting." Say, it, it, well, actually, yeah. I mean, sort of not a rut, I would say, but like um, the live stuff. I, I mean, I still shoot live music. I haven't been doing it as much within the last uh, couple of years. Um, I, I switched to, because I, I, uh, 
I had a full time job for for almost ten years. I was at this full time job, and then uh, I got let go. The company dissolved. Um, so I went full time freelance and when I decided to do that, I wanted to explore doing portraiture and and experiment with lighting. Um, when I went to art school for like a hot minute, (laughs) that was something I never got to learn. Yeah. I, and I, I like to joke that, you know, that this is what a art school dropout looks like. Yeah. Hey, Um, I'm I'm right there with you. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and it, it was, you know, and I, and I honestly, I enjoyed it. There was great things about it. And then there was not so great things, but one of the not so great things was that I never, I never got to learn anything about lighting, you know, like using strobes. Okay. Um, yeah. so, so I decided I wanted to experiment with that cause I just, I had never have, and I had only been doing just shows. Okay. Um, and I was getting like, not burnt out, but I was just kind of, you know, wanting to do something a little bit different. Um, and just experiment more, I suppose. Okay. You know, I mean, well, with the show, you kind of, you know what you're going to get in terms of that there's going to be a show and there's going to be a performance. Yeah. Whether it's good or bad, that's, that remains to be seen. But, you know, um, you can't really experiment too much. Um, right, right. Yeah. Cause you don't have control over the lighting or what, what your subject is going to do. You're just, right. you're just going back to what you're saying, capturing you're a bunch of candids. Yeah. You, you're capturing a whole bunch right. of candids. So yeah, I kind of. I was getting, I wanted to just explore uh, portraiture. So that's what I've been focusing on for the last uh, couple of years now. And which is, and it's kind of happened at, it's been great timing uh, because it's sort of linked up with all the music promo, you know, as well. So like it, it kind of goes perfectly with that because most bands would know me for like going and shooting shows, not doing actual, uh, just regular portraiture or band stills. Right. Right. So, have you? Is there somebody that you've uh, always wanted to work with that you haven't had the opportunity to? Oh gosh, there are so many. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm a huge music fan, so there's, I, you know, there's so many different artists that I would love to to work with, or even not even, and not even necessarily just bands and artists, even creative teams. The, one of the last questions I've got for you, if unless I can skim through this and see what other, what other ones I've missed. Now that you've been working more in in studio do you prefer location or studio work more right now i'm having a lot of fun doing the studio work just again because i get to experiment um but the i guess the one negative side about that for me is sometimes not having as much as many people to shoot subjects because sometimes it's not easy to just get somebody on the fly you know if i have an idea which is why i end up taking a lot of photos of myself a lot of my self portraits are basically me working out ideas. Oh, okay. And that, and maybe uh, that's that's one thing that I always had a problem with was I, I hated shooting myself. That sounds terrible. I hated photographing myself. I don't I don't I don't like shooting not myself does. either. You know, I've had I've had conversations with other photographer friends of mine who don't who don't like doing that. I I have a really good friend who's she's. She's an amazing photographer, uh, live music. Her name is Debbie Delgran. She's and just an amazing person in general. Um, and I remember having the conversation with her where I was telling her I wanted to, you know, I asked her, do you know anything about, you know, like portraiture lighting? And she's like, I'm so not, you know, like, I don't really care about that. Like, that's just something that's not just not my <laughs> cup of tea. Right. And so it's, it isn't for everyone, you know. Um, for me, I've been I've been really enjoying it. I've been having a good time. I wish I would have had a. Uh, I wish I had more uh, a disposal to, to people more, you know, like just like have uh, um, have uh, just more subjects to shoot, like whenever I want. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> but yeah, I can understand that. I can't. That's that's uh, that's always a, a problem when you're trying to do studio work is getting somebody to come in and and, and work with you, especially yeah. especially if you're just trying to work out ideas. Right. Yeah. Especially. Yeah. So if there's a, but and- that's why I end up having all of these uh, self portraits. So if there's any. Anybody out there that's going to listen to this and, and say, hey, you know what, I'm really interested in doing live work, live photo work, what would you, what kind of advice would you give to them? Um, in terms of like them, like breaking into that? like Yeah, you know, yeah, like reaching out to, to people or... Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, if you have, if you, if you want to 
if you want to go shoot bands, just go shoot bands. Go, you know, go ask. Ask whoever it is that you need to ask. And play with your camera. You know, like, again, I was, I'm pretty much self-taught. Um, and we now live in a time where you can literally look up anything online. I still, I like to do uh, all of my own editing. Right. My photos. Um, and there's, you know, I'm definitely, there's definitely, I, I definitely don't think I'm, the best photo editor. There's so many people who are so talented at that, but I prefer to do that. And so there's so many things I still don't know how to do, but you know, I just YouTube, you know, how do you do this? How can you do that? It's all online. Like there's just, it's, it's, it's there. You do got everything. Um, It's crazy. Yeah. So I would say just pick up your camera, you know, just play with it, experiment, have fun with it. Um, you know, and in the beginning, you know, I say I asked, you know, people, which I did, but I also snuck in my camera a lot, <laughs> you know, I actually am having a memory right now of how I snuck in an SLR at the Troubadour. Oh, wow. And it's, and it wasn't even that long ago. This was like maybe 10 years ago or something. <laughs> um, and like, I think I just had a coat on and like, I, I don't even, I don't even know. But like, I mean, there was times where I just snuck it in, which I mean, I'm not trying to condone breaking the law, but <laughs> you know, there was times where like, maybe someone didn't get back to me or I couldn't find out if you could bring a camera, but I really wanted to, you know, so I just risk it and maybe, you yeah. know, yeah, I've also been caught with it too. I've, I've snuck in and been caught and had it confiscated and. Well, and now it's it's uh, with the proliferation of cell phone cameras and videos. It, it's, there's almost nothing they can do because people everybody's bringing their their cell phones in. Which you know that kind of brings up an annoying thing about the live show. That's kind of one of an, another thing. Just an, an annoying thing about shooting live shows is that's part of it. Is you have everyone that's on their phones, and depending on who you're shooting, there's going to be a phone in your face almost the whole night. Yeah, but Again, uh, you know, not to not to sound uppity, but the bands that I'm seeing <laughs> that I love, you know, like the failures, the Interpols, the garbages, like all of those bands, their fans are really there to see the show. And like, yeah, um, I remember actually once shooting Chelsea Wolfe. And I don't know if you're familiar with her music, but there's moments, you know, where it could be very quiet. that where it was really quiet and I looked around and there was not a single phone up and she just she just had the entire audience and those are the kinds of shows that like I want to be at and it's the same with failure fans you know they may they may you know put up their phone for a minute when they come out or during their favorite song and then it's done and then it's down and then they're super into the show you know they know all the words I fa- that seems to be a generational thing I think I, I you and I are fairly close in age and we like the same bands and and that's the way we grew up you know you couldn't bring in unless you snuck in a, a you know an enormous slr camera and it's not right. an easy thing to hide <clears throat> uh there wasn't the cell phone cameras and stuff and and i feel like when i go to see a, a band from the era that i grew up in and I, I started going to shows i'll see less cell phones out like i i went and, and saw living color uh Six eight months oh, ago, cool. yeah, it was really it was really I I took some shots on my on, with my cell phone, and uh, I thought they came out pretty good. But for the most part, everybody was just listening to the show and enjoying the show. And uh, I, I feel that with a lot of the newer bands, you'll see people live streaming a concert that that you know they they paid ten bucks to get into, and then you know all of Instagram and Facebook gets to watch it now for that I, ten bucks. I definitely agree that it is. I think it does. It is a little bit generational, but I think it also has to do a lot with the band's music. Like again, Chelsea Wolfe is, she's definitely got a younger crowd. I think she's, she's newer. She's, she's got a younger crowd and she has a whole, the whole crowd is just in, they're watching her, they're listening. Um, It's the same. And on a lot of these, and I, and I tend to see, you know, especially while I'm in it, 
while I'm in LA, I see a lot of these same fans. Like a lot of the fans that I see at failure shows, I see at the Autolux shows. Some of the wow. Autolux fans I've seen at Chelsea Wool shows. You know, they're all kind of similar ish. We're all friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, yeah, so I've had that experience where it's been, you know, I've had, I've had few experiences where it was, you know, really annoying where someone was just, actually, there was one time, this was great. I went to go, I've shot, uh, or I've seen local age so many times. I love local age. Oh yeah. I love those guys so much. They've been around forever now. They have been, but I just adore both of them. They're really sweet guys. Hi guys. Um, <laughs> so, no, remember, okay. Now you got to tell them to listen to the podcast when it comes out. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> um, but there was a uh, one show where Scott was. Uh, it was at the Echo here in LA, and that's a smaller. It's a it's a smaller venue. It's like a smaller stage. Okay. And um, he's, you know, performing. And there was this photographer there, who was like standing kind of on the stage in front of Scott, and he would like pick up his camera and do the thing where he you put it over your head, right? Kind of thing. And then was snapping and had the flash going. Oh, geez. Which is kind of a big no no. Yeah. You know when you're shooting shows. And he just had the flash and Scott actually had to stop the show and like, you know, basically told the guy to, you know, piss off. Jeez. Uh, but it was great just watching that. And just But then, I, you know, I was watching this guy and I'm just like, you are ruining it for yeah. everyone. You're so annoying. And you're giving, um, you, you know, you're giving actual photographers a bad name because if you if you have, have a real camera out there, that? you know, you're looking like a jerk. And the guy's trying to perform a show and you're like in his face. Uh, with a flash, I mean that's just ugh, that's so offensive. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you find it's hard to edit when you shoot bands like Failure? Any, anything with Kelly in it or or, or the band Failure? Is it harder to edit those guys than it would than it is to edit uh, like uh, Novella? Or, I did it. I said it right. Or uh, <laughs> or, or you know or, or somebody else or, or stuff you've done with with Garbage and Shirley Manson. Um. Kelly is like the easiest person for me to shoot. He's really fun for me to shoot. I actually shoot him a lot here, just, you know, practicing. I use him all the time. Um, and to edit him, there's no problem. It's like, I just, it's like me getting to know his face even more now. Okay. Um, <laughs> that, well, that, that makes, that's, that makes great sense actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I really enjoy the editing process, even though, like I said before, you know, I don't I try not to do anything uh, crazy in editing, you know, like it's just more like bringing out the image. But yeah. I love I enjoy the post. I really do. Um, it's I, I get frustrated when I don't catch things in camera. Yeah. You know, like when I'm like, oh, you know, like <laughs> I just I didn't see that or you just, you know, those are the frustrating things. That's when it gets that's when it's annoying um, in post. But I mean, um, again, there, there's nothing like awkward about shoot editing or anything like that. No. So you were telling me in, in the emails that we were going back and forth with that you really enjoyed your work with Shirley Manson. How did that come about? Well, it was more of the experience because I only really just shot a show with her or, or one of a garbage show. I met her. Um, she was doing a podcast uh, called Hour of Goon. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine, Fred Sablon, he hosts it with uh, Jordy White. Uh, who's in Marilyn Manson? Oh, okay, okay. Manson. I know um, that name's from somewhere. Yeah, they have a podcast. They, I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but they had this podcast together, Hour of Goon, and it was it just essentially just them two, and they would kind of interview whoever they'd like, and, you know, okay. fun podcast. And yeah. um, they had Shirley on. And I, I think the like garbage had toured with Marilyn Manson, I think, back in the day. Um, yeah, yeah. So it was like a fun podcast to get to hear. But Fred, um, he asked me, hey, would you like be into like coming and shooting behind the scene, you know, stills of us like oh, cool. just doing this podcast? And I was like, yeah, heck yeah. I'm, you know, I'm a big, I love uh, garbage and just just a huge fan of Shirley as a human in general. Yeah. So I said, absolutely. And um, that was really fun. And after that, um, I saw that garbage was going to be on tour. So, you know, I asked, I emailed her and I asked if That's I could, Awesome. you know, I, I just asked, you know, if I, if I'd be able to shoot either, I think 
she had two shows close together. It was one in Santa in Santa Barbara and one at the Hollywood Bowl. Um, it was the the tour that she did with Blondie. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. and um, uh, yeah. So I shot the show in Santa Barbara, but it was uh, I was speaking so uh, positively about it because the whole experience was really positive. It was just she just basically I was the only photographer at that show that was allowed to shoot. Kind of from wherever I wanted, really. Oh, wow. I, I mainly stayed in the front. I was in the pits. Okay. Um, but and there were there were several other photographers there. Um, and you know, I think, <laughs> sorry, it's okay. Sammy Callie, no problem. Chill out. There, there's, there's dogs right outside. Of my oh. um, anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, like, so it made me feel very, you know, special. That was so sweet. You yeah. know, you don't have to do that. Not all, you know. It, she was just, and she was just really, she's a very supportive person just in general. Um, but like after, you know, I was done shooting, I got to say hello to her and the band and they were all really sweet. And she's just somebody who, she's just somebody that I have a lot of respect for because she, she has a lot of respect for other artists, especially women. Um, she's really vocal about that. And yeah, she's, she just also, she's, yeah. And she's very, and I appreciate that. And I'm like, 100 percent team Shirley. <laughs> so for me like you know she really did i felt like she when i shot that show was like oh wow this is really cool like she didn't have to do that yeah, yeah. um you know basically all the other photographers were only allowed like the first couple songs i was there shooting the entire set wow. from wherever i wanted to which has been a lot of my experience with with different bands which i would say if you're trying to break in to shooting bands like it kind of depends too on what you want some people want to maybe just make a career out of they want to be. They want to be known for that for shooting bands, um, like a Ross Halfin or. I don't know. I feel like I'm a little bit more. It's more important for me to get to shoot something that I actually like want to hear and and see, not just like anything. Right, right. Um, which is, which is why I've shot what I what I have shot. So yeah, you're a little more selective on 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 the work that you choose. Right. Oh, but I was going to say, yeah, if you're trying to shoot, if you have contact directly with the band, I feel like you always, I feel like they just, and I know other photographers who know the bands, I always just feel like their pictures are great and it's just a better experience. And it's a nicer experience when you're like getting your credentials and all that kind of stuff. Right. Well, that makes sense. Oh, Priscilla, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find your work? What's uh, the website or an Instagram Twitter, whatever. How can people uh, yes, uh, find you? Let me just double check my own website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Priscilla, my website is Priscilla C. Scott photos dot com. And I'm also on Instagram, uh, Priscilla C. Scott. And that's I'm actually those are the only two forms of social media I really or the only so, form of social media I really have. I have a Twitter, but I don't really post I have a lot of pictures on Twitter. Well, that's great. I, I encourage everybody to check out the website. You've got fantastic work on 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 it. I've, I've been a recent follower of you on Instagram, so uh, it's I'm thank really enjoying seeing your work and all. And thank you thank so you. much for coming on. I really enjoyed talking with you. And uh, hopefully, we can maybe maybe one day we can get you and Kelly on at the same time. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, he'd probably be into that. <laughs> oh, um, I do have one listener question that I forgot to ask. A uh, listener named Kelly oh, sure. Scott wanted me to ask you, "Who's your daddy?" <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he has the creepiest mustache right now. I have to tell you, <laughs> he he has a mustache right now, and it's driving me crazy. Oh. <laughs> I'm not a fan of his mustache when it comes out. I mean, luckily he's got some. The rest of the facial hair is like now finally grown in. For a while, it was just the the mustache. I've got. A, he can grow a pretty healthy mustache. See, I've got a feeling when he when he would do that, it, would, it kind of looks like a Doc Holiday kind of. That's that's kind of a what I'm picturing. He he, he could be like in, yeah. in Tombstone or something. If he had the tombstone the tombstone gear, if he looked like if he had the whole like outfit on, that would be really hot. But <laughs> he's just like in his regular, like his cheap trick T-shirt yeah. and the mustache. Is like <laughs> I'm gonna have to isolate that and I'll send it. I'll, the, uh, the 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 hot <laughs> idea. I'll just send that to him, and then then you guys can deal with the consequences yes. after that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming on. Um, thank you. Hopefully, this was interesting. I've never done this before, so it was a blast for me. I love, like I said, I love talking photography to to somebody who does it professionally. 
I did it professionally. I didn't ask for like, and you, what kind of photos were you taking? Oh, I did everything. Um, I went to RIT, went to school for it for two and a half years, and then I, I left. And uh, I, mm-hmm. I did everything. I did um, everything from school pictures to live shots to weddings to product photography to... Um, oh, weddings. Oh, that's the worst. I absolutely I've done one. That. I did one wedding reception, not a wedding. It was a reception and it was for a friend of mine. And that's probably the only time I'll ever do something like that. And it was fun because I knew her and I had friends that were there and yeah. it was like pretty mellow. But I've been, to, I've, you know, a lot of people have asked me that, like, why don't you get into like wedding photography? And I'm just like, oh, it's the worst. It's, it's a whole other beast. And <laughs> it is. It is. And it's, it's a little bit better now with the digital because you can see the what's going on immediately and, and but right. I, I absolutely hated it. I, I, I actually loved shooting architecture. That was one of my, and, and, you know, live music. Cool. That was, that was my stuff. In fact, if you, um, if you look at, if you find my Instagram, uh, you can take, I don't, I, I don't know if I ever gave that to you. I don't know. If, I don't know who the hell's following me. And I, I'm, you know, I'm just some, I think, I, I, think I follow you. If you, I mean, take a look at that. <laughs> I, I've got some of my living color stuff up there. So, um, but oh, I, great! I shoot. Cool. I shoot. Um, God, I, I love shooting architectural architectural details. Um, uh, I, you mm-hmm. know, honestly, I haven't posted on there in a little while. Um, with, with spring and summer here, I'm, I'm shooting a lot of like flower details. Um, what a architecture is something that I haven't really done yet, and that I really think is very interesting, and uh, I and I enjoy. I did it, um, in- but I haven't. Uh, haven't got into it yet or just don't know anything really about it it's it's so fun the problem is is the distortion you get with the regular slr you know that you shoot a building it looks like it's falling backwards i when i was in school we we could check out cameras it was insane rnt was absolutely insane um in the night because i was there in the 90s and that was you know film was still king so we would go and we would do um studio sessions and we would do darkroom sessions in the mm-hmm. studios you could go into a place that we called the cage and you could check out anything. Yeah, you, yeah, you would check out anything you wanted to. I mean, you could check out a Hasselblad. You could check out a CNR four by five. You could check out an eight by ten. It's you could shoot you, you know a little SLR whatever you needed. And then uh, when you got back, you would go into the dark room and you could you would have all the chemicals were actually on little spouts, little like taps, almost like a beer tap coming out of the walls. So you would get your developer, your fixer, your stop, all that. And you just get your separate little bottles for it, and you just tap it right out of the wall. And they had, so cool. it was insane. It was absolutely amazing. And then they had studios with all this professional lighting, so you go yeah. to the studio. And each class, you would have, uh, especially the, the the first year, you would have set times where you're what we they call like the photo one, the photo two classes. Right. We just learned the general how how <laughs> how a studio works, how cameras work. You, you learn basic lighting techniques. They would have set times where you were at, the entire class was in the studio and the entire class was in the dark room, and then they'd have times where you know you were free to just go out and shoot whatever you wanted. Mm-hmm. The problem for me was I I didn't have a whole lot of money. My parents did they weren't a whole they weren't real well off or anything. And right. And for each each uh, assignment, we had to shoot like ten to fifteen rolls of film. And at that time, you know, three, four bucks a roll of yep. film for a college student is tough. And then you got to develop it all. And so I ended up shooting like instead of the 10, I'd shoot maybe five. And then I, I, I really wasn't mature enough to be in the program I was at the time because when I would go to my teacher and we'd do the editing process, I ended up taking it all kind of personally. Like, oh, that one's terrible. That one's awful. You don't need that one. And then after you pick the uh, four or five pictures – there would be a critique for your whole class. We'd, right. we'd, yeah, they'd sit there, they'd yeah. put your work on the wall, and we'd go by display by display, and everybody would critique it. And I just sat there, and I dreaded it every single time. And I just, I just went more and more into myself, and I was just like, oh, mm. this sucks. And I found, <laughs> I found that, that I was hoping when I got there, it would be this big open experience where everybody would share techniques, and, and I would learn all kinds of stuff. And it ended up being my teachers were awesome but if uh, if i was in a class and one of my classmates had figured out how to do a, a neat technique or something they were not willing to share it at all they're like nope this is this is what kind of sets me apart from you guys i'm not, it was very competitive and uh, Interesting. i was not prepared for that so 
So after like two and a half years, I ended up leaving and just going yeah. into the work workforce as a photographer. So I feel like it is st- it's still competitive, but like I remember somebody asking me that recently. Like, do you feel do you feel like it's it's too competitive, or like you know, there's so many there's so many photographers. There are, I mean, just in LA, there's like everybody's a freaking photographer. Well, that that you know what that reminds me of something I was going to ask you. I, I was looking at some of the pictures of uh, of Greg. Uh, I guess it was one of the pictures where he was going to a gig in, with Autolux. And he's okay. on a, yeah, he's on a sidewalk. He's got his guitar case, and he's looking down the street, and he's got his hand up, well, like he's trying to hail a, a taxi or something. And it, yeah. I, it just something clicked to me, and like it, it seems to me like in LA there must be photographers everywhere. Like you, you've got it. I mean, it's out on the street, and you're taking pictures of somebody. There's nobody that nobody seems to be nobody seems to care. And with all the paparazzi you see, with all these stupid, horrible pictures that they end up taking, it seems to me like you could sit there and shoot everything and nobody would care because there's so many other people out there shooting all kinds of stuff. It's is, definitely, is that well, the case? No, I don't think it's like, it's certainly not like where there's like a photographer on every corner. Um, I just mean in terms of like everyone, there's so many photographers here who are trying to have a career in photography, you know, yeah. whether it's through music or headshots or whatever. It's interesting that you bring up that particular photo though. I remember uh, Greg actually... Um, like after he saw that photo later, you know, after the fact, he was like, that's so weird that you like took that. I don't even remember you taking it. Uh, I remember him liking it. He was him saying something positive about it, but like he didn't. Re- I don't think he even saw me take it, even though I was right there. Hey, and that's that's, again, another one of the decisive moment types of shots that I love. So that uh... he's he's made a joke before that I wear an invisible cloak. That's what he <laughs> said once a long time ago. Well, that, that that's good for yeah. a photographer. That's that's why I ended up being behind uh-huh. the camera. I like I like being behind the camera, not in front of it. Well, exactly. I well I agree. Unless it's myself taking it of myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta try to hook you up with my buddy. I I've got, I don't know if you. Uh, well, I do another podcast. I don't know if Kelly told you anything about it, but I don't even know if he remembers anything about it. But it's a sports show, and it's uh, two of my buddies are out in L.A. And they host it with okay. me. And uh, one of my friends uh-huh. is, uh, he's a producer for Comedy Central. So he produces the Jim Jeffries show. So uh-huh. he, uh, if if you ever look into to experiment, I can only see if Jim's interested in, in uh, shooting with you. I don't know Jim really well, but I, I know Tommy could ask. So, so. And if you know sure, if you ever if you yeah. ever interested in going just going to see a, a taping of the show and getting a, you and Kelly can get a couple of giggles. Yeah, the, the tickets yeah. are free, but I can always tell. Have I can always get you to meet up with Tommy, and you can go meet Jim afterwards if, if you're interested. So, yeah, that'd be cool. But, uh, I mean, again, like I'm always kind of up for different experiences. Also, like I don't want to, I don't always, or I don't only want to shoot. Who knows what I'll be shooting? Yeah, later. You know, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And you want to keep your options open, and, and it's you know you always want to grow. So, yeah. Well, thank- I think so. And like you had actually asked me earlier about feeling sorry. I no, no, no. Keep going. Keep going on. No, no, it's not a problem. You asked me earlier about like feeling like uh, if I struggle with um, getting in a rut uh, with like, yeah. Um, and so far I, I have not experienced that so far. Well, that's good. Um, and hopefully that doesn't go away because I feel like most people don't want that to go away. Yeah, it, um, my 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 struggles are more about like uh, I wish I had more money to like get all this different kind of gear, or I wish I had like those are more of my struggles. Yeah, I'm always looking at lenses I want. I can't afford any of the ones yeah. I want. So. <laughs> no. Well, look, I I yeah. really do appreciate your time. I'll, I'll let you go. I know you you've got other stuff to do besides my podcast, but uh, thank you so much. Um, no, thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. 